Welcome to our brand new series called Beyond the Ballot, where the policies matters. In this series, we focused on conversation with government representative and opposition candidate about current policies and issue state and nationwide. I'm your host of the day. My name is Amit Kumar. Let me present over today's guest, Honorable Member of Parliament, David Christopherly, an opposition leader. Thank you for agreeing to be a guest in our show today, David. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I'm really looking forward to it, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please allow me to start this podcast. Very first question we start with, tell us about you, including your background, childhood and upbringing. How have these experiences shaped who you are today? Uh, first and foremost, I'm the son of migrants. So my dad came to this country when he was a, a young boy. His his father, so my grandfather or nonno, as we say in Italian. Oh, wow. My nonno came here when he was about 40 and he decided to come to the country for a, for a fresh start to be able to get ahead because they couldn't in Italy. They were, they were just unable to... To, to do the things and to, to save the money. So they came to a new land of opportunity. They moved to North Queensland. He cut cane by hand in the field. And then after about 12 months, he brought his wife and the three kids that he had over to Australia. And that's really shaped my upbringing. So I, I grew up in North Queensland in a little town called Ingham. Oh, yes. North, yes. Of, north of Townsville. Yes. Very big sugar community. Yes. And those values have what define me, um, values of hard work, uh, reward for effort. I, 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 love, I love people who are prepared to, to just go and have a go, which is why I love migrant communities. I really do. I just something about it, someone who'd be prepared to leave their home and go and work yep. in a completely different country to True. set up their family True. so that their kids can have an education that they didn't get so that their kids can have an opportunity. I love that. And I... You know, I'm just that. That's that's my childhood. Just a, a a normal kid in country Queensland, running around playing cricket, playing footy, not doing very much schoolwork. <laughs> that was that was my childhood, mate. That's wonderful. No, that's inspiration, man. That's inspiration. Thanks. Look, we we I think the Australia is a, is a nation um, built by immigrants, and and when when any immigrant. Uh, reach on that stage where you are today that's that's a inspiration story to all of us it's nice of you to say mate I, I still think no matter what i achieve in politics it won't be anywhere near as much as my late grandfather achieved oh, okay. you know, he 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 was the one who gave us the opportunity so he he came over and um, just worked, worked really hard, saved money, bought a little farm, saved money, bought a little bit more. And my dad left school when he was 13 to go on the farm. So dad never oh. got an education. I got the education that my parents and my grandparents denied themselves wow. to give me the opportunity. And, um, you know, I, I, I love that. I love that story that the son of a migrant can get elected to a parliament I, I, that's not a story for me. That's a story for every single person exactly. who's a migrant exactly. who comes to this country, and, and I love that. That's great, man. That's that's. Uh, I think it's a lots of uh, our listener or viewers can. Um, it's eye opener for them, so no excuse. Uh, if one small guy from small town from England yeah. can do that, you can do that too. Thanks. That's wonderful. Thank you. Who or what inspired you to enter in politics? Uh, I was a journalist, I mean, and okay. um, I didn't really like my local council. Okay. <laughs> and I thought that it needed a bit of a shake up, so I decided to run. And that was up in North Queensland. All righty. And what year? Uh, 2004, when I first okay. got into council, I was very young. I was only in my early twenties. Okay. So I didn't really expect to win. I just thought it'd be good to just shake things up. And then I was like the dog that caught the car. <laughs> you don't expect to. You expect to just chase it yeah, and yeah. keep the car honest. Mm. And I caught it. And uh, that started my interest in politics. So I was a very young man and I then went on to state politics from there and I've had some highs and lows along the way. I've had some wins. I've had some losses. And it's been it's led me to where we are now. So we're, we're less than 12 months away from a really big election in Queensland. And um, I've... Um, 
you know, I've, I've had, I've worked, I've worked on the land. I still own a little farm today, which Dad runs for us. Okay. I've worked in the in private sector. I've worked in government. Okay. I've worked at council. I've worked at state government level, and I, I, I love this state. And I think Queensland is. I, I know as leader of the opposition, people expect me to say that everything is wrong, but I won't do that because I love Queensland and I think we've got a pretty poor government, but put that to one side, yeah. the fundamentals of Queensland is so good. Like we've got agriculture, we've got tourism, we've got mining, we've got the smartest people, we've got the ability to do high-end medical research, we've got high-end education. So many people who come from India come here because of our learning institutions. True. That's true. why they want to be here. That's true. That's and, true. And, and I love that. I love that about Queensland and I want people to understand and believe it. And so if you're watching this in Queensland, congratulations, you're in the best place. If you're watching it interstate, too bad, so sad, you should move <laughs> here. And if you're watching it overseas, you yeah. should come to Australia. You'll, you'll yeah. love every minute of it. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay. Now... Uh, if you don't mind, in 2004, how old are you when you elect, uh, like... Uh, 24. 24. 24. Very young. Very young. We'd, uh, we had our first child the year after in 2005. So I wasn't even a dad yet at that stage. Very young. Okay. That's wonderful. Okay. Could you please briefly describe your journey in politics leading up to your current role as an uh, opposition leader? Um, wins and losses, um, victories, defeats, highs and lows, but... I'm very sure that I'm a better politician because of it and I'm certain that I'm a better person. I, uh, I lost an election in 2015 okay. and it was really, really tough. It was, it was really tough and I, I was a young bloke at the time. I was still re reasonably young. It was 10 years ago and um, I was in probably too much of a hurry and I needed a good kick in the bum and uh, I got it and um, it you know, it made me, a, made me a better person for it. And having come back into politics, it's made me realise um, the, the, the value and the ability to affect change. It's a really privilege. It's a privileged position to be able to see things and help people. I was just in, a, I was just in the Sunshine Coast this morning and we do what we call town halls where people come and tell their stories about health. And by doing that, by them speaking out, we then shine a light on it and we get people surgery who haven't had surgery. Like that, you don't get any more fulfilling than that. It, it really that. is. And then we also drive change that's needed for the system to help the many, many people who are falling through the cracks at the moment. We, we've got big challenges with health in Queensland, big, big challenges. There's been a decline for almost 10 years now and we need to turn that around. And it's important that we shine a light on it and prepare ourselves for government if we win the election in October next year. Okay. So what have been the biggest challenge you have faced in your political career? How have you overcome them? Uh, losing election was pretty big. <laughs> um, but you bounced back. I did. And that's the story of um, so many of your viewers and your listeners who will have the same thing. True. In life, if you, if you don't fail, it means you've never tried. So you've got to be prepared to make mistakes and learn from them and be better True. for it. Um, a big challenge I had when I was uh, a, the recovery minister, so I was the minister responsible for rebuilding after floods, mm -hmm. and um, that, was, that was really challenging. That was probably the most challenging time of my professional career, to go into areas, and Bundaberg in particular, in, yeah. um, in, the, in the Burnett area in Queensland, they were just devastated. Some, some of the images that I saw, some of the people that I met um, – Really heartbreaking, really heartbreaking. And rebuilding that community after that was probably the most challenging period of of my professional life. It was really, really tough, um, but fulfilling too, to be able to see things repaired um, and, and just to see that Queensland spirit. The, the one thing about Queensland is we have our fair share of Mother Nature getting cranky at us. True. True. Cyclones, floods, yep. fire, drought. Yep. Keep us busy. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But yeah. we're a strong, resilient exactly. people. Exactly. Now, the pe people you meet, the things you see, I met people working for the local SES and the police who sure. themselves had their house completely destroyed and they hadn't even been to their house and they were helping other people. That's Queensland. That's a Queensland. All right. Now, can you highlight any significant 
achievements or milestone you have attained in your public service? I put that one very high up the list. The other one is I was uh, Minister for Local Government and I had to change the way that councils worked and we really gave a lot of power back to the council, back to the mayors and the councillors. So in Queensland and Australia, we got three levels of government and I had seen too much power taken away from councils and that's where I started. I started in local government. So one of my biggest things that I was able to do was to change the way that councils run to give more authority to the people who are elected by their community. And I, I love that. That, that. That's the best form of government there is. Okay. So the next question is, look, as a uh, public figure, it is a crucial to maintain open and honest conversation. How do you approach discussions with the individuals who hold opposing views or ideologies? By being honest with them and not trying to say what you think they want you to hear. And I find, generally speaking, the vast majority of people respect that. They really do. If you say to them, look, I don't agree with that and this is why, they may not agree with that position, but they respect it and you give them a value reason. This is this is my values and it's different to yours that doesn't mean I'm right and you're wrong. That doesn't mean I'm good and you're bad. It means we see the world through different prisms. That's good. And that's the joy of a democracy. True. That's the difference between democracies like Australia and India compared to autocracies where you don't have that ability to disagree. You disagree, you disappear. That's no good. Exactly. I love that. I love the ability to be able to... To, to have a disagreement and be able to shake hands and move on. Okay. How do you deal with the trolls online? Um, <laughs> by dis- great question, Keyboard by the barriers, way. Keyboard barriers, you but know. Great question. I disconnect me as a person from the, the public figure who is getting that from those people. And I think to myself, I know who I am. I'm comfortable with me as a person. I've still got the same circle of friends I've had for the last 30 plus years, still got the same mates. I know the sort of father I am. Uh, I know what I'm like to the people close to me and I can take comfort in that. And if people choose not to like me or be abusive because of my political views, I think that shows more about them than me. And it goes both ways. I, I don't like seeing my political opponents being um, abused. Like that, that's, that's, there's no place in that in a democracy. You get a chance every four years exactly. to go bang. That's true. That's democracy. Being abusive, you can disagree strongly, yeah. put across your point of view, yeah. but there's no need to be abusive. I, 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 can, I can disconnect me as a person to me as a public figure because I know the sort of person I am. Wonderful. In your opinion, what is are the key points or key policies area that require immediate attention in Queensland? Yep. The battle lines for the next election are crystal clear. Youth crime, health, housing, cost of living. Boom. They're the four. People are scared in their own home because of weaker laws, fewer police. Queenslanders are scared that an ambulance isn't going to turn up because it's stuck at the end of the ramp because of the health crisis. Not enough beds, not enough doctors and nurses, system in crisis. They're worried that their kids are never going to be able to own a home or the most vulnerable won't have a roof over their head. And going across all of it is cost of living. Power, rent, insurance, all of those things. And they are the battle lines for the next election. So make no mistake, that is going to be our laser-like focus fixing those issues. And how do you plan or your party plan to address them? We've listened to Queenslanders and on the back of it, we've put forward policies right across the board. So with youth crime, we're going to rewrite the Youth Justice Act. We're going to make consequences for actions, remove detention as a last resort, get serious about early intervention. When it comes to health, we're going to put doctors and nurses back in charge. Within 100 days, Queenslanders will see what's happening in their hospitals by releasing data in real time. With housing, we're going to deliver infrastructure to make sure that there's more land We're going to fix the social housing system so that we can have more people, more social homes and bring the community housing sector back. And with cost of living, by fixing crime, you drive down insurance premiums. We're going to get those power plants up and running so that we can put 
uh, downward pressure on electricity prices. That's the way to help people across those four big crises. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. What are your personal value and principle that guide your decision making, both in politics and your personal life? Same across both. And that's a really good question. I don't have a separate value system for public life and private life. I believe in reward for effort. I believe in the family as a basis of, of, a, of a functioning society. Uh, I believe in the rights of an individual. I believe that somebody who works hard should be rewarded for it. I believe that somebody who doesn't have the ability to work hard should be supported, particularly when you talk about people with disability. Uh, I love small and family business. I believe in less regulation for small and family business. We are not the party of big business. The LNP is the party of small and family business, mums and dads. Uh, I believe in a free society. Um, I love to protect our natural environment so that we've got something for future generations. They're exactly the same values I have in my personal life as in my public one. Wonderful. Wonderful. Beautifully put. Thanks. How do you maintain a work-life balance considering the demanding nature of political leadership? I'm not even going to pretend to be good at that. Uh, I'm, I'm terrible at that. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I, I really enjoy my job and I, I love meeting people. So I probably spend a little bit too much time at work. Uh, despite that, I got two really remarkable, two remarkable kids and um, I, don't, um, I don't often talk about them because I am very private and um, I, never, I never put their images out. We've, my wife and I have done a really good job of keeping them to be just normal, well-adjusted kids, but they still like me, which is really good. <laughs> Cause, Father, man. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but <laughs> one's 18 and one's 16, so that's, yeah. that's normally the age that... Girls yeah, can yeah, uh, can tell yeah. their dads they don't want to spend much time with them. Yeah. They're, they're really good. They're really good kids. That's great. And um, that's uh, – I don't get – my balance isn't great, but what I do do is when I'm with them, they have my undivided attention. So when we get the rare opportunity to sit down to have a meal and um, if you get a chance, have a look at my um, Facebook TikTok or Instagram page for some of those recipes. Okay. Because I love cooking. Okay. okay. Um, um, you I, got my attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. Only Italian. Oh, okay. I, it's, okay. I, we, we might have a cook off one day, you and me, Hamid. What do you reckon I, about that? No, we'll do. We'll do. Okay. You'll probably I win. I saw the other day on the Scott Morrison, and it's, it's uh, he made like, I think, a, he, a curry he, day. He, he was I, curry. Almost every. Oh no no no! He he was he loved making he loved making his curries. Yeah, I'm oh, I'm very traditional Italian, so I make great homemade pasta. Yeah. Make these beautiful little desserts. Get online, David Christofoli. Have oh, a look at it. You'll love it. I You'll already, love it. Already mouth watering, man. Um, but I love when we sit down for a meal. Yeah, I they have my attention and that they are my priority. So even if That's we sit down for fifteen great. minutes, my phone goes to the side, and um, they've got my priority, and that means a lot. That's matter. That's great. Okay. What do you hope to achieve during your tenure as an opposition leader? Are they their specific policy area or reforms you are passionate about addressing? Well, the first bit was to reform my party, the LNP, and we've done that. And everybody's rowing in the one direction and it's really great to see. And um, we, we're vibrant. We're a real grassroots party. We don't have – we're not controlled by the unions or big business. We're a party of members, of grassroots members, and, and we've really put them back in charge and in the driver's seat. So that's the first reform we did. Second is we listen to the community about their issues, and I've spoken to you about those challenges and the policies, and there's one hurdle to go, and that is to win the election. And that's in October next year, and we bring good government to people – and help make their life better. And in five years' time, so after the four years, if we get the chance to govern, I'll be saying to Queensland as well, I said to you that we were going to make inroads and improve health and housing and youth crime and cost of living. And I'm confident once we do that people will look at that and say, okay, you uh, you deserve another another term. And that's that's what it's about, changing lives for people. Okay, Queensland's multi 
culturism is mm. a one of its strengths. Mm. How does you or your party actively support and celebrate the diverse culture background of its citizens? By knowing that we are a better country because of multiculturalism and by making sure that our policies with multiculturalism isn't just about having events and celebrations that's important but it's also about things like can we transfer skill set from another country to here are we able to get people training that they need can we fast track a way to get people's kids into university that's what people want when they come to a new country and interestingly i see the way that the indian community has immersed itself in queensland and in many ways i see so many similarities from the italian community of the 1940s and 50s that's true as i do with the indian community now in this modern era people who come to this country and they're prepared to do anything to get their kids an opportunity and their kids are becoming doctors and nurses and IT professionals and teachers and small business owners that's the story of multiculturalism in this state true india and australia i think they are in the best relations ever yep so how your party see this relationship um probably the most pivotal relationship we have and in a time of global instability the relationship between australia and india is more important now than at any time before obviously big for trade very big but also for other things like the immersion of the cultures that i mentioned to you about education before that's that's a really really big part of it but increasingly india is becoming a superpower there's no doubt about that and we need to have great relationships with indians here and at home right it's both it has to be there has to be that watertight relationship and i look at the values and the the values between india and australia go back a long way we fought side by side on the battlefield and people forget that um but the 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 india is one of the great democracies and long standing long standing we have so much in common and and so much respect aside from when we play cricket and um that's when i have to say that shane warns the greatest leg spinner ever to play the game and i know that there'll be a whole heap of people throwing things and saying that it's actually anil kumble i i, I understand that <laughs> that's the only thing we disagree on <laughs> is cricket and oh, that's, uh, a, that's and, a big battlefield <laughs> and and uh, i just should point out that the world cup was a yeah, lot of fun i know <laughs> the 20 <laughs> don't bring that one. <laughs> the 2020 wasn't so good yeah. but we thought uh, we thought after winning the world cup we should true, allow man. you yeah that's true we should allow you to <laughs> towel us up 4-1 oh that's great that's a good one okay what message do you have for indoors tv and indians in brisbane facebook group community mm. and how can they actively engage and contribute to queensland economic growth and overall development great question get involved in your community um be proud of where you come from don't ever don't ever let go of your traditions be proud be proud of where you come from but also be proud Aussies and true. same way that my my dad true. my dad's proud of his italian heritage but you, you won't find a more proud Aussie than my dad so do that and there's another thing you can do get involved in the political process don't sit back and just allow others join the political party get involved i'd love you to join my political party but in the end provided you're politically engaged that's one of the great things about being in a democracy you can do that and um my i'd love nothing more than to see um um to see more people of multicultural backgrounds in the parliament we we'd be a whole lot better for that if that occurs how they can actively uh, involve in politics because lots of people i know i going to receive uh, lots of text and how can they actively like join the party and yep. what's the process thanks i'll leave you a email address okay. and people can flick us an email and okay. you can put that on the bottom of the screen or if they get in touch with you yes. uh, and we'll get you along we'll get you along to a meeting i've got okay. uh, um 
I've got a whole heap of people who are coming through the political process, including young Indian Australians too, who are joining and engaging and want to be part of the process. And you should, you should. You live in you live in a great democracy, and it doesn't matter what you might want to go into politics. You might not. You yep. might want to run a business. You might yep. want to work for someone. Yep. You might want to be a nurse. You might want to play in a sporting team. Yep doesn't matter yeah being part of your community and part of the political process is one of the great gifts you can have yep. it's it's a it's a real blessing and you should get involved okay lastly we believe in room for improvement so please tell us what is your opinion in about our show what is your experience what was your expectations when you when i invite you and how you rate overall experience out of 10 well um, <laughs> the best way to do that is to flick to the wide shot and for those of you playing at home there's about half a dozen cameras here <laughs> flick to the wide shot and have a look what they've created um i didn't expect i um, mean to see this level of professionalism mate you've done really really well it's great quality of your, your gear and the you know the, the way that you've set this up is excellent and um Never miss an opportunity for branding. <laughs> Never miss an opportunity for branding. I love it, okay. mate. You've done really well. Congratulations. Okay, we appreciate your willingness to share your insight and to with, with our viewers. And thank you for your time and contribution to Beyond the Ballot, where the policy matters. And we believe uh, and wish you all the very best for your campaign. And... Good luck. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure and um, love to see you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank Any you. message, if you want to give it to that, that's your camera. Any message, stage is yours. Be proud of who you are. Love where you live. Get involved in your community and go Australia. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs>